go. 5.4. We're going to graph using slope intercept form. That song you probably don't recognize yet. It comes from the best math game you've probably ever, ever played today. It's an amazing game that after this section you're gonna, you can go play and have some fun with. Very good. Also, uh, Mr. Sullivan really loves that sound. He loves the sound quality of that, that song. So if you want to rewind that, unplug the headphones, blast it as loud as you can in Mr. Sullivan's room. Shoot, give it to Mr. Kelly. Everybody appreciates a, a good tune like that. And... Uh, Excellent. So let's get it rolling. What are we What are we doing here? We're doing 5.4. This is huge. This section is huge. This is like a defining moment in algebra. We have to be able to do this. We're going to do it the rest of the year. I'm not even overhyping this. It's slope intercept form. It's y equals mx plus b. So if you got through slope, you're ready for this. That's why we spent so much time on slope, hammering it out. What is slope? So it's called slope intercept form. There's two things why this form is nice. It's y equals mx plus b. We know from last section that m stands for slope. So this is the slope of the line. y equals mx plus b. Boom, m is the slope. What do you think of with slope? Here's what I want you to think of. You gotta think of rate of change. Slope and rate of change, interchangeable. I can call them either one. Also, rise over run. And when I think rise over run, I think about y's over x's. That's huge. I'm always putting my y's over my x's. Rise sounds like y's. This, this delta here, this little triangle means change. This is the change in y over the change in x. And we wrote that as this fancy little formula. Subtract your y's over subtract your x's. So those are things we got to know about slope. It's part of this formula uh, that we're going to keep using for a long, 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 long time. Uh, so hopefully we're good with that. Y-intercept, then, if you can guess, is now we're going to call it B. That is the B. So I didn't make this up. It's not M and B for, like, Mr. Bruss. This is the real deal. This is it. B is the Y-intercept. What do you think of when you think Y-intercept? Hopefully you're thinking something about the starting point or the initial value. What, did you start with five cakes and you make three cakes every four hours? Something like what did you start with? Obviously, an intercept... Back to the section before that is a point where it crosses the y-axis, so that's the formal definition. And we see that with 0, comma y, the actual coordinate. So those are important. This is huge. I'm talking about y equals mx plus b. So make sure you have this written down, have it. X and y are always changing. They're going to change whatever x is changes y. That was that whole independent, dependent kind of thing we looked at. Um, so it's changing. So they're going to stay variables. So what we're going to do is graph using this formula. What's nice about this, I can instantly see the slope. I can instantly see the y-intercept. In this case, I can't find the x-intercept without a little bit of work. So it's a little bit of a drawback. But uh, overall, it's the one we prefer to all right, so let's start using this formula to graph some of these things. So over here, I wrote the formula, so we always have it, y equals mx plus b. If you want to put it above, let's take a look at our first one. Our first one is y equals 2x minus 4. So if you think of mx plus b, let's find what we know here. We know the slope is what? m is what? It is 2. The slope of this line is 2. So what is b? b in this case is negative 4. So what we uh, can do here is, let's start graphing it. Where do I start at? I start at negative 4. So he started negative $4. What are you doing from there? While well, you're doing your slope, remember everything's a fraction. The number from x is the slope. Even if it's just 2, it's really 2 over 1. 2 divided by 1 is 2. So everything's a fraction. So my slope is rise 2 over 1. From your initial point, I start at negative 4, boom, up 2 over 1. Then up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. So I want you to fill up the whole graph with dots. Then once you have your dots, get a nice straight edge, draw it straight through there. Ooh, start off rough, but not too bad of a line. So I see all the dots in there. Uh, fill up the graph paper. That is the equation of the line. So it's I can tell it started at negative 4, has a slope of up 2 over 1. Fantastic. How about this one over here? Where does this guy start? He starts at plus 4. So let's say you have $4 in this case. Then what's happening? Well, it's negative 5 fourths. And the negative really messes with some people. If it's negative 5 fourths, the way I like to think about it, that's the same thing as, go ahead and put that negative on top. I always think of my rise as the negative. It's legit. It's the same thing, negative front or negative on top. You could actually put the negative on bottom. But I like to think of a top. Why? Because what am I rising? I'm rising negative 5. So to rise negative 5, you're actually going down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then over 1, 2, 3, 4. There's my second dot. That's all that'll fit. And then from there, I can draw a straight line. <laughs> Hope yours is straighter than mine. Like that. So what's cool about this, if I look at the slope of this, the slope of this line is positive. This line is positive. If left to right, it's going uphill. This slope was negative, and it's going downhill. It's a negative line. So double check your slope. If, you're, if your slope's negative, your line better go downhill. It's the most common mistake. Um, that'll keep you from doing corrective assignments and all that fun stuff. Excellent. How about the next one? 
X whoa 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 this does not fit my y equals mx plus b special case it says x is 4 it just means x is always 4 so find x here's the x axis x is 4 there is no y no y step so it's that special case here it is it's straight line up straight line down it means x is always 4 so we may run into vertical lines it has an undefined slope uh, that can happen don't freak out all right let's go down to the bottom here and we'll change colors uh, how about this one where does it start? Well, mx plus b. I forgot the x on this. I'm going to write it in here. I hope it should be on your notes there. Sorry. Uh, negative one fourth x plus three. It starts up here at three. And what am I going to do? I'm going to rise down. Remember, I say negative one fourth, and I'm going to go down one over one, two, three, four. Can I continue the opposite direction? Sure. I instead of going down one over four, I could go up one, back one, two, three, four. So same difference here. And I'm going to slide that and get a nice line like that. So try to fill up all the graph paper with dots. Very nice. How about the next one? Sometimes people freak out about this one. Don't freak out. What is B? Do I see B? Aha, there is no B. So what does that mean? B is 0. I can still see my slope is 1 fourth, the number in front of X. B is 0. If it really helps you, you could do this. Say 1 fourth x plus 0. But you're starting here at 0. You have no money. You have nothing. What are you doing? You're getting up 1 over 4 put a dot and fill it in the other way. Instead of going up one over four, you can go down one back four and put a dot. And boom, there it is. Woo! Love it. So is it a positive slope? Sure, it's a positive slope, positive line. Again, negative slope, it's going downhill. Negative slope, negative line. And the last one, this one's kind of tricky, so I kind of picked the bottom row of some tricky ones here. Um, it's three minus x. If there's nothing written in front of x, how many x is that? Well, it's just one x. So don't freak out. There it is, 1x. So where am I going to start in this thing? I'm going to start at b, which is 3. And then my slope is negative 1. But be, remember, it's a fraction. It's negative 1 over 1. So I'm going to go down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. And can I go back? Sure, up and then back, up and back. Keep that pattern going. Straight line through there. And good, I've got a negative slope, negative line, so I am good to go on that. Fantastic, let's keep this rolling. All right, here we go. So can we write the equation of the line? So what if I give you a graph and I say, okay, what's the equation line? So this is a great skill to have. So think about something like this. I know the equation, we're going to write in y equals mx plus b. So anytime you do this, you're looking for two things. You're looking for m and b. If you can find m and b, you're in business, you're good to go. So let's start with b. I think that's a nicer one to find. B is the y-intercept. So what's the y-intercept of this line? Boom, right here, negative 1. So its starting point is negative 1, negative 1 dollars. Then what's it doing from there? So what's the slope of this line doing? Well, from here, it looks like it's going down 1. Where does it hit up perfectly? Aha, over here, 3. So if there are no dots, you've got to kind of put your next dot in where it crosses the grid perfectly. So does it keep going down 1 over 3? Sure. How about the other way? Up one, back three, up one, back three, and it keeps that pattern going. So you can tell here it's down one over three, so negative one over three. So my slope is negative one over three. So I found the slope, I found the y-intercept, so can I write the equation? Sure, it is y equals negative one-third x, there's my slope, plus b, which I can you can put plus negative one or just minus one if you want. That's the equation of the line right there. Love it. All right, let's take a look at the next two examples special cases. We got some special cases here. So this case is uh, what's going on here? What is the well, first let's just do our M and B. Where is its uh, Y intercept? There it is right there. I can see it right there. It's at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this Y intercept is at 5. What's the slope of this line? It's rising how much? It rises nothing. There is no rise in this line. Once it's run, well every time it goes over like 1, you could say 2 or 3. doesn't matter. What's 0 divided by any number? it's zero so you can write this as y equals mx plus b zero x plus five or really zero times anything is zero you can just say y equals five so this is a special case y is always five you get that horizontal line there fantastic how about this case another special case if i look at this where is its y intercept where does it cross the y-axis there's none ooh bummer so it's not going to fit in my normal y equals mx plus b mode does it have a slope I mean, really, it's rising every time, isn't it? You could say it's going up one or two or whatever number you really want, but it's running. How much? How much does it go horizontally? None. Well, can you divide anything by zero? No, that's impossible. 
it's undefined. So this is a weird one that has no, an undefined slope, no y intercept. So all we can really do is say x equals what? 1, 2, 3, 4. That's negative 4. Fantastic. I threw a little uh, shout out here for algebra versus the cockroach. This game is awesome. That's what it's all about is right equation of line. As you do it, you kill cockroaches. You can choose your weapon. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I put a link on the website. Go play it. Hey, I just learned this great trick for those special cases like the one above here called Hoy. Check this out. So when you have a special case like that, the H is for horizontal. It's a horizontal line like the horizon. So you got a horizontal line. The O is for a zero slope. So zero slope. And then the Y is for it's a Y equals. So just like the one above is Y equals 5. Uh, this will help you remember horizontal zero slope y equals hoy. All right, what about for vertical lines? Well, we have vux. Vux means we've got this vertical line straight up and down, and that has a what? It has an undefined slope, so it has an undefined slope when it's going straight up and down. And what is that? That is an x equals kind of problem, just like the one above is x equals negative 4. So when you see x, you know it has an undefined slope and it's a vertical line versus hoy, horizontal, zero slope, y intercept, or I'm sorry, y equals. Great way to remember these special cases so you get these right. Uh, awesome. Moving on. We got two more slides, though, real quick that we're going to hammer out here. Uh, let's check them out. What if it's not in slope intercept form? So if I look at this, it's not in standard form, it's not in slope intercept form, what am I going to do? Luckily, we spent part of chapter three solving for y. This is why we were doing it. Solve for y is huge, hugely important. Something we got to be able to do. So I'm going to solve for y. So to get y by itself, what do I got to do in this case? I like to draw this line down here. I'm going to divide both sides by two. So the twos cancel. I'm left with y equals six x minus eight divided by 2, and I can split this up uh, as 6x divided by 2 minus 8 divided by 2, and can I simplify that a little bit? Sure, 6 divided by 2 is 3, so I have 3x, 8 divided by 2 is 4, so I have this. Now I am in slope-intercept form, so really slope-intercept form means solve for y, then graph it. I know it crosses my y with negative 4, the slope of this line is 3, but it's like 3 over 1, so I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3 over 1, up one, two, three, over one, one, two, three, over one. Fill that bad boy up with dots. Boom, there they are, points on my line. I'm good to go. Excellent. Oh, how about this one? This one's even worse. It's not solved for y, so I gotta solve this thing for y. Again, so I don't get confused, I like to draw a line down here on the equal sign, um, just to keep my thoughts straight. I wanna get y by itself, so I gotta get rid of this four x, so to get rid of the four x, I gotta subtract four x from both sides. So these cancel out. I'm left with, this is the key, this is a negative 3x. Do not forget that negative sign. I'm sorry, 3y. Do not forget the negative 3y. Can't combine these. These are not like terms, so all I can do is say it's 9 minus 4x. Then what am I going to do? Get y by itself? Well, it's negative 3 times y, so I'll do the opposite. Divide by negative 3. Divide by negative 3. These cancel. I'm looking at y equals 9 uh, divided by negative 3 minus 4x divided by negative 3. And really, I need to simplify this a little bit more. What is 9 divided by negative 3? Well, it's negative 3. What's a negative 4 divided by negative 3? This becomes positive. I got my double negative there, and I'm going to leave it as a fraction. It stays positive 4 thirds x. So this is the equation of the line I need to graph here. Fantastic. So looking at it, remember the number without the x is the y-intercept. So I'm going to start here, my y-intercept at negative 3. And from the y-intercept, I'm going to go up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1, 2, 3. Put a dot. I think that's the only one that fits. There's my line. I always double check. Yes, I have a positive slope. This is positive. I'm good to go. All right, here we go. So real quick, uh, this is a good time to pause. Play the game. Here, I'm just going to get you watch me play a little bit if you want. I play this pretty much all the time on the weekends and whatnot. I'm going to pick a shoe to kill the cockroaches with. Um, also, there's an application problem that you can oops that you can do and check it out i put a video at the bottom it's good if you're having a hard time with these applications i thought it would be <laughs> down here you type down here you type in the equation so here's the cockroach he's doing the line he's going straight back and forth and you got to hurry they're multiplying if there's too many they get you so this equation i know has no slope 
it's just y equals negative 2. I'm going to type it in and I'm going to hit fire. Here, here comes the shoe and it stomps them out. Excellent. So I round one. I won round one. I'm going to play for a little bit. Peace out. Keep it real. <laughs>